Welcome to ProBeta's quick video tutorials. In this video, we'll be learning more about Document 1140, Fraud Risk Assessment. The objective of this document is to identify and assess fraud risks at financial statement level through obtaining an understanding of the entity and its environment. This document can be found under the Risk Assessment folder in your Caseware document library. Please note that this document is different for small and large entities. For small entities, the document does not contain any tabs, but rather is divided into different sections to assist you in obtaining an understanding of the client and to identify fraud risks at financial statement level. In the first column, you'll be guided to consider the various fraud risk factors faced by the auditor. In assessing all these factors, you'll be able to identify fraud risks and thereafter conclude on the overall fraud risk of the engagement. Indicate the presence of each of these risk factors by using the Yes-No drop-down selection box in the next column. In the Description column, you'll be able to insert a description to clarify the details and also document any other possible considerations. Finally, in the Risk column, you can raise a risk relating to the risk factor in the first column. For large entities, the document is divided into different tabs to assist you in obtaining an understanding of the client and to identify fraud risks. These tabs are Incentive, Opportunity, and Rationalization. In assessing all the risk factors posed on each of these tabs, you'll be able to identify fraud risks and conclude on the overall fraud risk of the engagement. The first tab details the incentives for perpetrators to commit fraud, for example, the result of desperation caused by a financial need or a perceived need. The next tab details the opportunities to commit fraud, for example, due to the lack of internal controls. The rationalization tab details why the fraud was committed, possibly due to a lack of ethical culture or low morale. On each tab, you'll be guided to consider various factors relevant to the client, enter a description if required, and raise a risk if necessary, just as we did previously in the document for small entities. Additional rows can be inserted at the end of a table. Right-click on the consideration and then click on Insert Row at the end of the table. The row will be inserted at the end of the table. If the Insert Row selection is disabled, it means that you are on a lower case view user level than set by the engagement partner in the probe firm settings. To delete a row, right-click on a row you have inserted and click on Delete Row. You can only delete rows that you or another user have inserted and will not be able to delete any pre-programmed ProbeMMX content. The Delete Row option will hide if there is any text in the row that you are trying to delete. The cell must be cleared before its row can be deleted. If the Delete Row item is disabled, it means that you are on a lower case view user level than set by the engagement partner in the probe firm settings. One of our amazing premium features offered to our premium users is Caseware Risk Space. Caseware Risk Space is an online community that provides content to help you document risks, controls, and management letter points. Premium users can import risks, controls, and management letter points from Caseware Risk Space into their template by clicking on the Caseware Risk Space icon. This will not only save you time typing, but will also ensure that the correct spelling and grammar are used, which will result in great report writing. Our premium users will also have access to footnotes. In terms of footnotes, a table has been inserted at the bottom of the document with footnotes titled Instructions. These are specific considerations that need to be taken into account as per the relevant international standards on auditing as well as the applicable international accounting standards. Instructions will also include appropriate laws and regulations for easy reference, the relevant paragraphs have been quoted.
To record a risk, click on the Record Risk button and then click on the type of risk that you want to record. You will then be taken to the Record Risk screen where you can record as many risks as needed. To add a new risk, click on the Add Another Risk button. In the Source column, insert the source from where the risk was identified as a cross reference. You can also double click on the cell to automatically insert the source. In the Risk column, you can provide a detailed description of the risk. Note that premium users can insert the descriptions of imported risks from Caseware Risk Space by simply clicking on the search icon. Imported risks can be filtered by typing a keyword in the search field, then selecting the appropriate risk, and then clicking on OK. In the Implication column, you should insert a detailed implication of the risk. By describing the implication of the risk, you'll be able to better understand the risk and the effect it may have on the financial statements. Next, indicate whether the risk is significant or not by clicking in the checkbox in this column. Significant risks require special attention. These risks will be included in Document 1220, Audit Plan and Strategy, and need to be addressed in the work programs. Non-significant risks will only show in this document and Document 2.0, partner sign-off for the partner to conclude on. Significant risk responses should be designed and entered in the Audit Procedure column. Note that the Audit Procedures field is only available if the risk is marked as significant. To edit a risk, right-click on the risk and click on Edit Risk. You will enter the Record Risk screen from where you will be able to edit your risk. To delete a risk, simply right-click on the risk in Record Risk Mode and click on Delete this risk. After you have recorded your risk, you can click on Submit, which will return you to the previous screen you were on before starting the risk recording procedure. For small entities in the Conclusion section of the document, a summary of fraud risks identified at financial statement level is provided. You must document your assessment of the overall fraud risk by selecting high or low. The fraud risk assessment will affect the overall risk of material misstatement, or ROMM, which is calculated in Document 1110, Risk Analysis Summary. For large entities on the Identified Risks and Conclusion tab, a summary of fraud risks raised at financial statement level, as well as conclusion per tab, is provided, and once again, you document your overall fraud risk assessment. Once you have concluded on Document 1140, Fraud Risk Assessment, you can sign it off. For more information, you can visit our website at www.probemmx.com, email us at probesupport at probeta.co.za or call us on 010-595-QMMX today. Thank you for watching.